knowing that we were about to launch into phase two of this capital campaign that we've been in trying to raise money to expand our campus, I wanted us to be able to pray something about that, that we would trust God, that if we felt like he was stirring something in our hearts, that we were going to step out in faith and just trust that whatever he was calling us into, that we would be able to see it through because he has plans for us and that his plans are never incomplete. At the same time, this was correlating with some job transitions that my wife was going through and as a family, we were praying through what was next. And so there was this kind of just typical prayer that would come out every time that we'd pray, but God, your will be done in everything. Whatever that looks like, whatever that means for us, we're gonna trust you with the process. Or at least that was my hope, that that would be the truth of my heart, that I would trust God with it. But from there came this chorus that says, your will be done in everything. We trust you unashamedly because none of your plans are incomplete. And so we celebrate your sovereignty. And that idea for me came out of my studies. About three and a half years ago, I had read this book on the Trinity. And one of the things that was the most fascinating and compelling to me in this book was this whole idea that God did not create humanity or create anything because he needed it. It wasn't because God had an ego that needed to be stroked. It wasn't that God was bored by himself and so he decided to create people. It's that God did it out of love, love for himself to share his being with that which he created. And this idea was new to me, but it was really, it helped to put a lot of pieces together because there is that lingering question of what's the point of our existence here on this earth? Why would God create us? Does God just need us to tell him how great he is all the time? But if that were true, of course, that would mean that God is dependent upon humanity and dependent upon creation and therefore can't really be God because he wouldn't have been able to exist without any of those things to begin with. And so I wanted to talk about God being this pre-creation, pre eternally existing God, this being that's always been, that's been completely self-sufficient and self-sustaining. And that that God is the God that's sovereign over all of our experiences and all the things that we go through in life. And that that's the reason why we can say things like, we trust you unashamedly because none of your plans are incomplete. But with that, it's intentionally also put and, and kind of juxtaposed against the bridge. And the bridge says, I know I'm prone to worry. I know I'm prone to sink, but you call me on the waters. You call me to believe. I know that I can trust you, so help my unbelief. Give me a faith that rests in your certain sovereignty. And so much of my personal journey has been me wrestling through doubt and wrestling through these moments where I really want to trust God, but my anxiety has seemed so overwhelming that it's really difficult for me to. And so this bridge is a confession of sorts. It's a confession that says, I'm just acknowledging God. I, I admit that I am prone to worry and I'm prone to, to sink. I'm prone to not take those steps of faith when you call me to it. I'm prone to not trust you, but I want to. And so would you help me with that? And the second part of the bridge where it talks about if time and space and all of their complexities, if they're all created and invented by you, then I guess I can trust you.